April 1945, the war is lost, but within the claustrophobic confines of the Führer bunker, reality is a distant echo. The bunker, Hitler's last stronghold, is a labyrinth of fear and denial, a fortress against the inevitable. Within its cold, concrete walls, the echoes of a lost war reverberate. As the world outside crumbles, inside the bunker, a different reality unfolds. Here, Adolf Hitler, the Führer of the Third Reich, clings to the threads of a fraying dream of victory. Hermann Goering, his second-in-command, watches on, his mind filled with an opportunist's calculations. Amidst this, a new character emerges from the shadows, General Gotthard Heinrichi, commander of the army group Vistula. Summoned to the heart of the Reich's dying power, Heinrichi carries with him a message of grim truth, a report that bears the weight of a nation's fate. General Heinrichi, commander of the army group Vistula, is summoned to deliver a dire report. Hitler, delusional, clings to fantasies of victory. Goering, ever the opportunist, senses the end. The year is 1945 and within the bunker's cold concrete walls, a critical dialogue unfolds. General Gothard Heinrichi, a seasoned military man, steps into the room to face the Führer and his second-in-command, Hermann Goering. There's an air of doom, a sense of inevitability that hangs heavy in the room. Heinrichi, with a voice as steady as his resolve, delivers the grim news. The Reich is on the brink of collapse. The Soviet forces are insurmountable, closing in on Berlin. The once mighty German army is now but a shadow of its former self. He pleads for the welfare of the German people, for an end to the senseless sacrifice of lives. But Hitler, lost in his delusions, refuses to accept the reality. His eyes, once filled with the fire of ambition, now flicker with the desperation of a man unwilling to let go. He talks of fighting to the last man, the last bullet. He speaks of reserves, of new weapons, of miracles that might turn the tide of a war already lost. Goering, a man known for his opportunistic nature, remains silent, watching and waiting. His silence is not of agreement but of calculation. He senses the end, but unlike Hitler, he's willing to face it. Yet he chooses to remain silent, a mute spectator to the desperate denial of a falling dictator. The chasm between fantasy and reality widens. Heinrichi's truth falls on hostile ears. Hitler's refusal to surrender, his obstinate denial of the inevitable, seals the fate of millions. In the depths of the bunker, a meeting of great consequence takes place, one that signifies the end of the Reich, the end of a delusion that brought the world to the brink of destruction. This is the last hour, the final meeting, a moment etched in the annals of history, a moment that marked the end of Hitler's reign and the beginning of a new world order. In the bunker's oppressive silence, the generals witness a leader untethered from reality, commanding a phantom army in a vanished empire. The air is heavy, thick with desperation and the scent of imminent defeat. The confrontation between General Heinrichi and Adolf Hitler intensifies, a stark contrast to the war's chaotic crescendo outside. Against Hitler's raging delusions, Heinrichi stands firm. His voice is steady every word a plea for sanity in the face of madness. He insists on the inevitable. The Reich is crumbling, the war is lost. But Hitler, ensnared in his web of denial, refuses to accept the truth. His eyes blaze with an unhinged fire, accusing Heinrichi of defeatism, of betrayal. Yet Heinrichi does not falter. He continues his desperate appeal, his voice echoing in the bunker's cold concrete walls. He speaks of the German people, of the lives that could be spared, of a surrender that could end the senseless bloodshed. His words, however, fall on deaf ears. Hitler's mind is a fortress, impervious to reason, fortified with illusions of victory. The tension reaches a fever pitch. Voices rise, echoing through the bunker's corridors, a grim symphony of despair and denial. But amid the tumult, Heinrichi's words stand out, resonating with a chilling truth. There is no military solution left. Surrender is the only way to spare lives. Goering, realizing the Reich's doom, contemplates his legacy and survival. The rotund Reichsmarschall, so often seen in his pristine white uniform, decked with medals, now grapples with the stark reality of defeat. He had once been the second most powerful man in Germany, a close confidant of Hitler. But as the Third Reich teeters on the brink of collapse, Goering finds himself at a crossroads. While Hitler rages, lost in his delusions of victory, Goering is plotting a different course. He is a pragmatist, a survivor, and he sees the writing on the wall. He understands that the end is inevitable and imminent. 
But what will become of him when the Reich falls? Will he be captured, tried for war crimes, or worse? In the midst of chaos and impending doom, Goering begins to strategize. His plan? To succeed Hitler. It's a bold move, one fraught with danger, but Goering is desperate. He drafts a letter, carefully choosing his words, hinting at his readiness to take over if Hitler is incapacitated. It's a gamble, but in the dying days of the Reich, Goering has little left to lose. But as he plots his path to power, the world outside the bunker is changing rapidly. The Allies are closing in, and the clock is ticking. Goering's window of opportunity is rapidly closing. His silence is a strategy, biding time as the Reich crumbles. Berlin falls. Heinrichs' warnings, unheeded, culminate in tragedy. The city, once a symbol of Hitler's ironclad rule, is now a chilling tableau of destruction. The aftermath of the bunker meeting reverberates through the eerily silent streets, its echoes felt in the shattered lives of the German people. In the heart of the Reich, the monumental edifice of Hitler's dream is reduced to smoldering ruins. The German people, once swept up in the fervor of Hitler's promises, now bear the brunt of his stubborn refusal to surrender. The once proud soldiers are now weary figures in tattered uniforms, their spirit crushed under the weight of the inevitable. The echoes of the bunker meeting, of Heinrichs' fateful message, resonate in their hollowed gazes. The grim reality of the war's end is etched deeply in their faces, a stark contrast to the delusion that once held sway in the bunker's claustrophobic confines. The aftermath of the bunker meeting is not just the downfall of a city or the end of a regime. It is the story of a people led astray by the allure of power and the devastating consequences of a leader's refusal to face reality. The bunker's echo chamber of denial led to untold suffering. The echoes of that denial still resonate today, a stark reminder of the dangerous consequences of unchecked power and the refusal to face harsh realities. In history's shadow, the meeting in the bunker remains a stark lesson on the dangers of unchecked power and the refusal to face reality. As the final hour of the Third Reich unfolded, the world watched in grim anticipation of the fallout from a regime that had been fueled by delusion, denial, and the desperate clinging to power. The echoes of Hitler's bunker reverberate through time, reminding us of the dire consequences when leaders fail to heed the warnings of their advisors and the realities unfolding around them. The walls of that bunker bore witness to the fatal cost of hubris, as Hitler's refusal to surrender led to untold suffering and loss. General Heinrichs' fateful message to Hitler and Goering, a plea for the welfare of the German people, stands as a beacon of moral courage in the face of overwhelming adversity. His stand against the tide of delusion and denial that had swept the bunker was a testament to his commitment to the truth, however bitter it may have been. In the final reckoning, Goering's silent calculation and Hitler's volatile denial were the last gasps of a regime that had lost its grip on reality. These reflections serve as chilling reminders of the destructive power of delusion and the tragic cost of ignoring the realities of war. Heinrichs' moral stand contrasts sharply with the delusions that fueled the regime's catastrophic end. Drawing from the echoes of the past, we are presented with a stark tableau of the human capacity for delusion and denial. The scene in Hitler's bunker, a microcosm of the wider war, is a chilling reminder of the dangers of unchecked power and the refusal to face reality. The tragic cost of ignoring the realities of war is made all too clear in the fate of the Third Reich. As we reflect on the actions of Hitler, Goering and Heinrichs, we are reminded of the importance of moral courage and the necessity of truth in the face of adversity. It is our responsibility to learn from history, to heed its warnings and to ensure that such destruction and suffering are not repeated. But remember, history is not just about remembering the past, it's about learning from it. So don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more historical insights. Let's continue this journey of understanding together and ensure that the lessons of history are never forgotten.